desire to consume animals is going to overrule the desire to avoid yes su uh su okay yes now does the fact that that desire overrule uh, sorry is the overruling in virtue of just how good it is to eat meat for you in terms of pleasure like um, the, pl the pleasure you let me rephrase that because it was kind of poorly worded the pleasure you experience from eating animals overrules the desire to avoid the suffering entailed by their killing for slaughter correct you'd agree with oh uh, yeah i think so yeah okay now given that given that one your nutritional needs can be met through means that don't entail the suffering of and two uh, your desire seems to be born out of pleasure rather than you know some commitment to uh, eating animals or some view that we ought to ignore ethical concerns with respect. Basically, what you would be committed to saying in this instance is um, that which is pleasurable for you is ethical, regardless of any other considerations. So you can foresee a hypothetical in which you think it's pleasurable to play video games, right? But each time you turn on your console, 10 children die, right? That's That's one hypothetical. Would you continue to play video games? Uh, no, because that would be murder and against the moral law. Okay, so what's the distinction between doing that and eating animals, given that you've already accepted you generally want to avoid suffering? Well, because um, Cause, my, cause what I desire, real, what real, I desire... Real quick before you answer, you can't appeal to some differential trait with humans versus animals, because you've already agreed with uh, the other guy, I think his name was Sagan, um, that you don't believe it's the case that all humans are, quote-unquote, capable of reasoning, right? They don't have the potential to reason. They don't have the potential to harbor consciousness. So really, what you're kind of saying here, in a strange, in a strange like, roundabout way, is if we can present you with a hypothetical in which you extract pleasure from something, regardless of the ethical entailments it has, your pleasure is going to overrule the secondary desire in all cases. Um, it's not just a ca it's not just some cases, right? You've actually committed yourself to saying something like, "I'm pleased, therefore no other considerations factor into the hypothesis." Um, well, it, I've 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 said that in that case, like for, with with uh, consuming animals, for example, uh, that would be the case because my my pleasure would be greater than. Um, you know, my, my own suffering from having costs suffering. Right, just like your well, pleasure when you play video games is greater than 10 children being fucking shot in the head, right? Well, in your example, it must it would be uh, children who are mentally disabled, right? It doesn't matter. But, uh, you've, look, you've, it doesn't matter. That distinction... No, it does, it does matter. It does matter because I said that I don't act against the moral law, and if those children are creatures of reason, then I cannot uh, will to uh, murder them. Simple right, no, that. no, no. Look, we've already provided reasons to think that the whole creatures of reason thing ought to be discarded because you've you've committed yourself initially to the view that humans should be preserved in virtue of them being creatures of reason. Some humans are not creatures of reason, right? So ergo, yeah. you can't commit to this human view. No, I'm, not, it, I'm not committing to the to human be... view. I, I said I don't practice speciesism. I'm committing to the creatures of reason view, and most humans happen to be creatures of reason. So just, to just just let me clarify your commitment here for the room, right? I just want to get this down pat. If I were to present you with a situation in which you're playing video games, and every time you play video games, 10 disabled children die, you will continue to play video games? No, because I personally Wait, no. uh, would get more suffering from that. As I would, pers I would Wait, personally not... suffer more, so Wait, I wouldn't you, get pleasure. So you just contradicted yourself. They're not creatures of reason, though. They're disabled. They lack the ability to reason. Yes, but right, um, so for so arbitrary, no, oh, for arbitrary reasons, I don't receive pleasure from that. But the opposite, and um, if I, that's arbitrary. It's arbitrary because that's not that's not uh, like my my your personal morals are not um, objective. They're not the moral law, or whatever. If they were, then you know they would be like if if my personal morals were objective, then they would be part of the moral law, wouldn't they? So they're just all my arbitrary desires. Right. I feel like those arbitrary do you, desires. Do you, do you important, understand? They're important, let me, but uh, you, 
Sure, sure. Folk, let me respond. Look, if you've basically <laughs> you basically just said in a room full of people that the reason for you uh, playing when it's an entailment of that you that, cut that, out. That nothing... You cut out. Wait. All right. Let me fix Try it. Repeat. Can you hear me now? Yeah. No, it works. Okay. Look, what I'm saying is there is no conflict with your moral view in playing video games and causing not disabled children every time you do that, right? You've already agreed to that. There's no, there's no contradiction there. So given that that's the case, when we ask you the question, so why wouldn't you play video games? And your response is, well, arbitrary reasons. It doesn't seem like you're going to be able to persuade anyone in here that those reasons are compelling at all, right? All arbitrary means is that you fucking pulled it out of your ass. You could just appeal to the fact that yes, the lighting is definitely. bad in your room, and that would be a reason to you know, not play video games, even though there's no conflict with your moral view. And by the way, yeah, because you know, I def case, one, one more second, and then you can respond. This isn't a case where you're just expressing preferences, right? We're not dealing with preferences. You're committing yourself to moral law, right? So you're just saying, I follow the laws whenever I feel like it, essentially. That's your view. No. No, no, um, no because, argument? well, the moral laws do not give you um, a guide to what exactly you are to do in every single situation. They're quite the open and many. No, laws are normative. The, 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 look, if I, for example, have the law, um, never sit on this chair, right? If that was the moral law, and the, the only moral law right now, that wouldn't tell me if I should drink water right now or not. That's something that's completely no, up to that's, me and arbitrary. That's just analogous. Look, we're saying the hypothetical is such that there is no conflict with moral laws, right? So yes, there exactly. has to be some reason why you don't engage in that action given it is not a violation of your moral laws. And the reason is, eh, I don't feel like, right? You understand that that's not going to be persuasive to anyone that doesn't hold your same intuitions, your same preferences, right? You sure. Basically. Yes. We're okay. all di we're all different. Yeah. That's so then you have no re look. But then you have no grounds on which you can appeal. You, you know, you have no basis from which you could say, "My view is persuasive. People ought not, uh, in you know, become vegan. People ought continue to eat." In fact, you're actually in conflict with your own views because remember, at the beginning, you you said something to the effect of humans are creatures of reason. Then we altered that into you saying, "Well, some humans are." Right? Clearly, we have humans that are disabled. And then ultimately, we presented you with a hypothetical where your actions are ones you desire. They, they generate pleasure for you. And they have an entailment that, by your own admission, doesn't violate any of the moral laws you've committed yourself to. That's directly analogous to the situation where you eat meat. Yet, for some reason, you're claiming it's disanalogous. And the reason it's disanalogous is, eh, I don't feel. So the only way we're going to proceed in this in this argument is, is this, right? You're going to have to show me why it's disanalogous. And if you fail to do that, we're just going to throw your entire view out on the basis of it being irrational. Look, it's um, maybe maybe I, I'll just explain the entire framework. Um, I have their moral laws, and they they you're bound to follow those. And there is also freedom of action, and that freedom of action, you can use whatever arbitrary reasons. It may just be, I just want to do that. And um, because that's just the realm of subjective, uh, of your subjective morals, there's no objective moral law there. Um, there's no problem. Like, I, I, I'm not trying to persuade people to not be vegan in the sense that, um, you know, you can, of course, but then you're just uh, you know, biting the bullet, right? And then you're just biting uh, the no, bullet. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm, not, I'm trying to defend that I'm eating meat, right? No, I, I, understand, I understand you're trying to defend the fact that you eat meat. What I'm saying is you're going to have to bite the bullet and say that you basically, the only reason you wouldn't make that sort of statement, that sort of commitment, is solely in virtue of your own desires, right? It's not predicated on rationality. It's not the case that you have some rational defense of carnism, some rational defense of uh, the consumption of meat. It's just the case that you feel like eating meat and you're out of accord with your own moral laws, but you get out of this conflict by just saying uh, my desires are such that it's not a problem for me. 
Wait, so basically my defense of carnism is just a skepticism towards a rational defense of, um, no, no, no. you know, veganism. The, the problem is you were given an analogy, right? The analogy was in one case, um, you have opposition to the consumption of human beings for meat because they are not creatures of reason, right? That was, uh, I did that not was say that point. I would do that. I did say that um, it wouldn't be against the moral law. Yes. Okay. So it's not against your moral laws to do that, right? It's Correct. not against the moral law, yeah. Not right. my moral laws, but the moral laws. The moral law. So these aren't hypothetical norms. You're actually appealing to categorical moral norms then. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm appealing the entire time to uh, Kantian ethics. See, okay, you just made it like tremendously more confusing. What's the argument that uh, moral norms are categorical? Um, be, well, for something to be an objective moral fact, um, it must be, so, uh, it must, like, uh, we, we act according to reasons, so every action has reasons, so the reason for action, um, which is, uh, must be, some, uh, must be, in order to be objective, uh, applicable to everyone, it's just no, a I'm categorical gonna, imperative. I'm not gonna look. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna accept the transcendental argument, right? Do you have a reason to accept that moral norms are categorical as opposed to simply being hypothetical? For instance, do you have an argument that defends the view that moral norms are categorical, right? Premises, conclusion. Um, that's just no. I I think that's just analytically true. What? So you don't, yes. okay, by your own admission, you don't have an argument then. I mean, if it's analytically true, you don't need an argument. Well, how can it be analytically true? Look, okay, but then you're just saying moral norms exist because moral norms exist, right? If it's not the case that you yeah, have an they argument, just... right, so it's tautological. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, it's basically just the principle of okay. non-contradiction. Okay, then it's not informed. Consider consider a situation in which I just approached you on the street, right? I'm a I'm a moral skeptic, and I ask you to persuade me that moral norms exist, right? I'm asking you to do that for me because I am not of the view that I'm sorry that moral norms are categorical, and your response to me is just to say moral norms exist because moral norms exist. Who's going to be convinced by that? Do you think? Do you think that's well, persuasive? Well, if you if you uh, don't show what that entails, then sure, it's not persuasive. But if we just take a look at how uh, objective moral uh, object objective ethics itself that um, that phrase uh, implies the categorical imperative, and um, by virtue of your rationality, in other words, that's what Kant uh, calls uh, the goodwill. You want to act, um, you know, you want to do the right action. Uh, by, by the virtue of that, you cannot have those contradictions because contradictions are per definition not right. Simple as that. It's not, it's not, it's not magic. You, um, you must accept the, the goodwill First, simply by the virtue of, all, of you being a rational being, all, and right, you must so accept the categorical all, imperative because it's um, simply analytically true. No, that. <laughs> first of all, you got it backwards, as Bryn is saying in text chat, right? The second issue is that, again, that's not a reason for anybody to accept what you just said, right? You're simply appealing to uh, certain consequences of the categorical imperative rather than establish, establishing an argument for why it exists in the first place, right? It's a presuppositional problem. If I don't accept the presupposition, you know, goodbye, hand wave. You've failed to persuade anybody. And given that your goal in a debate presumably is to persuade, especially now that we're on the topic of categorical moral norms, as opposed to you just having some weird unjustified desire to eat meat, I expect you to have a persuasive argument. If you don't, we can just toss you out. Right? In fact, your entire justification, look, your entire uh, rationale for not accepting veganism appears to be predicated on you uh holding cate ho holding categorical moral norms holding a view that entails categorical moral norms right so if you can't persuade me that categorical mor moral norms exist or you can't persuade anybody else in the room that categorical moral norms exist you're just fucking wasting our time um again i mean it's if you say it's analytically true i'm gonna hit my head off the desk dude 
Well, you first have the fact that we're rational beings and we're trying to do oh the right God. thing, right? Unbelievable. Look, well, we've got to start with that. There's either an argument or there's not, right? Look, there's either an argument or there's not. If there's no argument, simply say to me right now, I do not have an argument for the position and I'll move on with my life. If you do have an argument, I would like it presented to me. Stop wasting my I mean, you're obviously... Uh, are you accepting that, that, um, that you're trying to find truth? Is, is that, is that, can we agree on that, that we're trying to be rational? I have the desire to be rational. Okay, you have the desire to be rational. That means that... Um, is this an argument principle, or is this, are these a series of questions? No, it just means that in principle, you cannot follow a... Um, a, a maxim that uh, le that cannot be applicable to everyone because it wouldn't be objective. It wouldn't be rational no, to do something not, that's not objective. Let's, let's let's comprehend what this guy just said. If you have the desire to be rational, then you cannot hold moral views that are not categorical, right? Because why? It's irrational if they don't apply to everybody. For what reason? Oh, because they're just simply not objective. They're not objectively true so if they don't claim, apply to everyone. Right? They're irrational because they're irrational, basically. Why is it the case that if something's not objective, it's it's irrational? Can you explain that to me? Um. Well, what makes what makes something rational is that it's uh you know objectively true that anyone who also uses rationality would get to the same conclusion. Uh, wouldn't you agree with that? Would, no, or probably, would you say that? I, I don't. I think you're smuggling something in there, right? Look, there are things that can be r rationally justified, but people still won't accept them, right? I'm not asking you if you think if I think it's the case that if you could show they existed, I would accept them, right? If you had a knockdown argument, of course I would. I'm just saying, if it's not the case that you can present an argument for why they're objective, right? Then I don't have a reason to accept it primarily because I'd have the desire to be rational. Now I'm going to repeat the question I asked you like five minutes ago, right? Do you have an argument for the existence of categorical moral norms or do you not have an argument, sir? I feel like you don't understand it. I'll leave. Okay, you're... Well, okay, if he's going to leave, that's that then. It's just fucking ridiculous. He's accept... I, like, let me accept just whole... Oh, God.